All right, here we go. Greetings from the Erie Coast. This is Mad Shad and Charity. Here in the beautiful woods of Northwest Cleveland, Northeast Cleveland. I don't know where I am. I think I'm West Side. I think I'm West Side. West Side. Ah, I smell it. Death. All right, come on. Let's take the hill. Let's go check out the creek. It's beautiful. 68 degrees. It's crazy. Sun is shining. There's no snow. And the creek still flows. Very good. Up. We do have a slight breeze going on. <clears throat> Come on, Jerry. All clear. The birds are out. I'm starting to see some bugs. I wonder if there's fish in the in the creek. That would be nice. Everybody's outside. <laughs> Massive cabin fever. Gotta watch out for widow makers around here. These trees will unleash things upon you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a deer. Charity, stay. She is. Good girl. Go slow. <laughs> oh. uh. Uh. Hiking stance. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. Go that way. What have I been thinking about on my little walk here? So you know, we we have a uh, we have an interesting system. Oh, look at this! Charity, stay. Wow, these guys are literally right there. Hey, kids. This must be part of their family over here. It's like a young, a young one. This way, hey, oh. Charlie. So one of the things I've been thinking about is, is you know, even though that we voice our opposition towards the way things are going. And even though we even protest and demonstrate and address our grievances in public and on the floor of our, of our once great seats of power, that we 
the people elected those to represent us. Of course, uh, we all know what happened. We all know that's been erased. So what we got now is, oh shit. <laughs> Charity in the mud. I really didn't want to go down there, but. So now we have basically a regime that is fueled by us. Even though we stand in opposition for everything they do, we are powerless to stop them. And wherefore, might you say, it's our money. Our money. Our hard-earned tax dollars our fines and fees and, and everything that, that they collect from us, which totals in the billions, they use for their own ill-gotten gains, for their own globalist plans which we really stand in opposition of. You know, I, my, my heart goes out to those that are in war. War is, war is hell. Uh, but I really don't like the idea of sending billions of my tax dollars, billions of gallons of my oil. Come on, Charity. Come on, can you do it? Can you do it? Come on, girl. It appears that we're constantly in an uphill battle <laughs> against those in power. We are the serfs. They are the royalty. So very few of them. Very few number, too. <laughs> You know what happens when you overtax people? So eventually, they get tired of it. And something has to give. You know, an uphill battle is an uphill battle. But eventually, we reach the top. <laughs> Run to flat land. Charity, fix it. Charity, fix it. <laughs> you just noticed the uh, deer down there. <laughs> but how? How do we get away from this? This way of life that we've grown accustomed to. It actually works out pretty good. How do we reverse the tides? Defund these evil and malicious acts of our own government. <laughs> you know? They become so bloated and so powerful that they are just totally just they they don't see us as people they see us as a resource <laughs> so we fund the very thing that we hate we fund and empower those that we've elected, supposedly, to handle the affairs of governance. They have completely 
been corrupted and use it against our will. Why is that? Why do we allow this to happen? It's because convenience has made us weak. We have given a path, we have been given a path to <clears throat> success. <sighs> what we believe is success, actually, it's the road to complacency. And eventually, the road to compliance. If you own a car, you own a house, if you have a job, if you buy things, if you like toys, you like motorcycles, if you like pew pews, you like hunting, you like fishing, you like eating, you like fucking crocheting, whatever you want to do. If you want to play the game, you've got to play and you've got to pay. That's the truth. <laughs> Absolute truth. Stay. Go. So I really don't care too much about what's going on over the pond. We hear so much about it. And a lot of it is, is propaganda. <laughs> the ghost of Kiev. Kiev. The soldiers of Snake Island. Even the people of Ukraine themselves. And it's a lot of truth is coming out. So that's the thing. A lot of the truth is hidden within the lies. So what is a person to do? And faced with all this, this ocean of, of truth and lies, in an actual propagandist program to sway us into believing a certain way to have a to be influenced well you gotta have discernment discernment of mind and the intelligence to know when you're being lied to <laughs> I mean we all know what truth looks like but very rarely do we know what lies look like. They're hidden in truth. Oh, I'm walking through a minefield here. All right, hold on. So, it can be a very daunting task to try to swim, swim through the sea of information in the age of information. And you can see it, you can feel it, the anxiety, the stress that it caused. It's, you know, I, I, I love intel. I, I, I love to gather intel. I love to see even what the influence is. What, what, what is the message? What, what is the message that they're trying to convey with this this meme or this picture, this song, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a communicator. That's, that's who I am. And so I can, I can ascertain what the nuances are, you know, just by listening, just by looking. How do I feel? How am I supposed to feel? I, I know what their message is. My message is to you is to think don't feel, think. And as as preppers, as warriors, 
as critical thinkers. Oh, look, here's some here's some snow still hanging out. <laughs> It's very dense, very dense indeed. So we, we have to be able to weed through the bullshit to be able to make our own call. Ah, nice breeze, the sun is shining. It's very important for us to stay focused because that's what it is. It's a way of taking the focus off of something. <laughs> hey, what's up? Huh? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, well, next week it's going to be in the twenties. So enjoy this while you can. Everything is fleeting. Everything is subject to change. <laughs> Charity. We've got to be able to change with the tides. You know? Be a fisherman. Or a fisherwoman. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody fishes. Everybody knows how to fish. Oh, I see some. We've got to deal with this. So... Into my shirt you go. Oh. As I deal with this situation. Here. 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 Oh, this is fun. Yeah, so. What's that saying? These are the times that try men's souls. Yeah, they do. They do indeed. Hard times make hard men. And so we must do that. We must follow that. But we must be able to change with the tide. To understand the ebb and flow of things. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Not how you feel about it. But how you should react to it. You know, I always go back to fighting and stuff like that, you know. And uh, it never fails me. You know. The Art of War, Sun Tzu. It's always been, it's even practiced by a corporate, you know, as far as a, a way of, you know, gaining success. But it appears, oh. It appears that even in success, there is failure. I hear you, Cherry. Huh. Yeah. Bear with me, folks. I know. I have the greatest content. They're talking to you through, <laughs> through a freaking t-shirt here. There we go. Let me get you out of here. Uh, there we go. A treat for Charity. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. Uh, and away she goes. Uh, no. So, venting, motor setting, all these, all these techniques, they, they, they play a role. Uh, you know, concealment and subterfuge. They, they all play a big, major role. And, uh, you know, we've all seen the, uh, 
we've all we've all seen the classic uh, I can only demonstrate it hey boom you know watch this hand as this hand reaches out to strike you know or I hit I use this hand to probe to probe to probe to probe and motor sets you and actually get your hand in front of there and you don't see this hand coming out of nowhere or a low blow <laughs> you know or I go to the body go to the body go to the body then boom go to the face the same thing is being done to us so <sighs> wow 77 degrees in here amazing I might have to turn on the air conditioning Y'all, oh. got some wind blowing through here. That's nice. So, what is there to say about all this? How how are you supposed to react? How are you supposed to feel? It doesn't matter. Should you ignore what what is going on over there? Kind of. Kind of you should. I mean, if if I'm throwing a jab and it's five feet away, ten feet away, why should I take any fucking notice? Why I mean, why should I take any action? It's till the punch is close enough where I can do something about it. So, but our our psyche is one that we we are casualty vampires. We really are. Uh, we are casualty and, and, uh, calamity vampires. You know, we, we'll grab popcorn and, and watch a fight. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> and we've made a lot of strides in our, in suppressing our, uh, our animalistic, uh, urges, you know, through... Through society, through religion, through through, uh, through peer pressure, uh, through the evolution of our our heart, minds, and souls. And something has to be said about that. That's probably probably one of our uh, our greatest achievements as as uh, as sentient beings on this planet. And we see this type, even though that that uh, we, we don't consider most animals to be compassionate and you know, uh, loving, but they are. They absolutely are, and we see that. We see that because we have developed that and fostered that in ourselves. And so, in knowing yourself, you also get to know others, and that means all sentient beings. Yet there's a dark side. We all know that dark side, and that's war. War and, and just, some would call it evil. The evil of humanity. And what I, what I think about is where it comes from. It, it definitely comes from us. You know, uh, I was just on Ark Wild's, uh, you know, church and the thing uh, before I had to go take charity out for a big old walk. So, uh, <laughs> which is vital and necessary, you know. All sentient beings have to poop sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, it's good to get out, get some fresh air. But e even, even starch, religious, monastic people have these urges and thoughts of of murderous intent sexual depravity you know greed all the seven sins right and they have to study 
and pray and foster this this type of uh, mentality so they don't have those those thoughts and urges you know and and actually act upon them um, it's it's something to be said about that practice even though I'm a heathen I still recognize the the uh, the great great institution of, of Christianity and religion uh, so you know but I also realize that there is a dark side and that dark side can be exploited and you know we, we like to think of you know ah fear I will instill fear and I will be murderous and intimidating and you know but fear stress anxiety dread you know, the anticipation of death is worse than death itself you know so that's why torture is so uh or the anticipation of pain is worse than pain itself so that, that's why torture is so uh, so effective sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but to hurt others, you must also hurt yourself. That is very true. Um, very true indeed. So having that having that mindset of of that, if I'm going to go forth and create hate and discontent then yeah, it's, it's going to affect me as well. So I, I always try to, you know, keep things on a, on a I, I try to say things that are only helpful and kind. Uh, and, and we all should do that. And that's, that's part of, it's part of the uh, religious practice. And religious means doing something competitive, repetitive over and over and over and over and learning. And that's how we learn. We learn by thinking, doing, saying, writing, seeing, hearing, and in and, and practical application. You know, understanding the concept and, and, and applying it in our lives. <laughs> Greed. Greed. But greed can also be useful. In, in dogs especially, their greed is their, their evolutionary survival tool. If you have the urge to eat more, to go forth and find, to go forth and do anything possibly that you can to hunt and to take down prey, to eat, to take it from someone else, some other dog, you will likely survive. And the same is true about humans. But in human beings, we, we have developed a sharing community, a, a beneficial community. That's how it all started. Yeah. Some would say that farming came about because the guy was a terrible hunter. Or it was maybe a retired hunter. <laughs> so he started farming. <laughs> but with that came farming, husbandry, dealing with animals, raising. Why go out, why go out and, and spend all your efforts and, and endanger yourself, which, by the way, is pretty badass, uh, to hunt and bring back food, meat, and and risk the chance of losing it all when you can just grow it, <laughs> when you can raise it and feed it, and and then you know slaughter it and butcher it and pass it on. And so farming led to trade, and trade led you know led to commerce and marketing. And then, of course, greed. 
sloth. <laughs> when you've achieved everything, you kind of get a little complacent. Kind of like you won, you just won the race. Congratulations, you just made it. Go have a seat. You, know, you just ran a marathon that you trained all your life for. Congratulations, you won the race. Have a seat. Complacency. Convenience makes us weak. If you don't work on yourself, if you don't, if you don't involve working in a stressful environment and trying to think and yeah, a productive stress, um, you know, dealing dealing with dealing with anxiety is is you know that's that's a that's a age old thing. Look it up. Uh, you know, anxiety comes from that. That's our that's our evolutionary tool. Because even though we were apex, we are apex predators, something was hunting us, if not ourselves. So, <laughs> we, we had to establish that anxiety to have that, that healthy level of anxiety, that healthy level of paranoia. You know, because uh, like, a, like a, a madman once told me that paranoia is a higher state of awareness. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> but you don't have to be, you don't have to live in that state of anxiety to have that higher state of awareness. Um, Shakamuni Gutiyama, Lord Tamo, they all showed us a way. You know, Satori, uh, Sat I'm sorry, Japanese don't show ours. Satori, uh, they all showed us that there's a way to be calm and peaceful. Yet have this omni awareness of everything and yourself, which is much more beneficial than being very amped up and raw and violent and stressed out and and unsure of which way to go. Yeah. Uh, in in any battle, especially now, our war fighting has has come to the point where it's the most calm and the most accurate that counts. Yeah, sure, in, 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 in unarmed combat or, you know, melee combat, whatever, the stronger of the two is, is usually favored to win. Uh, but, you know, to throw old cliche at you, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. But, you know, having that advantage of being big and strong and fast, you know, that, that, that has to be something, something has to be said about that. So, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm not trying to reflect here. I am, I guess. I actually am trying to explain things. You know, and, and it, it kind of goes on back to we are we are living a life that our forefathers scraped and worked their fingers to the bone to provide us with this level of convenience that the world the history of the world has never known think about that you have air conditioning you have heaters you have car you have gasoline you can you can literally go somewhere. You can literally get on a phone, make a phone call, and food will be delivered to you. Anything you want can be delivered to you. That's amazing. Our 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 quality of life is is has been you know excelled exponentially. You know, now the average age. And quality of life in in our our older generation is is amazing. You know, hundred years ago you were lucky if you made it to fifty. Now fifty is the new thirty. <laughs> you know, seventy year old, eighty year old, ninety year old, 
hundreds. I mean, there's centurions out there, sectarians, uh, you know, with a, a, a quality of life. They can still enjoy things. They can still go for walks. They can still eat what they want. I mean, you know, that's of course, and it all depends on how you live. But overall, people are working longer, longer into their lives. And we just continuously carry on. We don't. We don't know about this whole great reset. We believe it's not going to happen. Because life as we know it still carries on. Even though we pay into our demise. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. We are funding the very evil that we're speaking out against. And so what do we do about that? That's a good question. A question that must be answered. So, I'm going to leave it there. This has been Mad Shad. Just, uh, walks and thoughts. <laughs> Encouraging you all to continue to train, continue to prep, and continue to think. Think, because we all know it's a mad, mad world out there.